Down in the workshop again today. Gonna try and get the jet engine to do its cool down sequence. I don't know if it's gonna work. Right, so sat there for a very, very frustrating half an hour and finally got it to work. You've got to do a thing where you push the throttle and the trim up on the controller and when it does that, you push next on the display, you know, the sort of touchscreen controller and then you put throttle down and trim down and next. And I tried every possible combination, just, you know, out of desperation really. Um, and then I went back and did the exact one that I did like five times at the start. And it works now. I, it's good that it works, but you know when, when something starts working and you don't know why it started working, like it wasn't working before, now it is. It can be frustrating, like you kind of want to know why wasn't it working, but hey ho, that is the way it goes. So I think we're gonna pretty much try it and I think the cool down sequence should now work. Which is exciting because I can just run the jet engine whenever, like just whenever I want. Because I, I didn't want to run it before, not for very long, because you know, it gets hot and the cool down sequence wasn't working and therefore if it's sitting there hot, very, very bad for the bearings. And because this thing does 143,000 RPM, the bearings are just a little bit important. Now before I start the engine, I'll just show you briefly what I was trying to do. Just, I might not have explained it very well. If you look at this, you can see it says ready. Now that's not a great thing because if I pull the trigger, the engine starts. What the trim does, and the trim is this little button right here. So if I push that button down a few times, and you look, you look up here, that's me taking it up. So when that's on zero, that reads ready. So let's push it down once. Minus two, or it can be anything, four, six, whatever. We'll leave it at minus two. We look on here, trim low. Trim low basically means you can pull the trigger and it's not gonna start. However, you can still pull the throttle and it will like get the, I don't know what it is, like it'll spin the turbine, spin the, spin the blade, no fuel going through, no glow plug, nothing. But you can sit and cool the engine. So what you can do is pull the throttle like this. And what that will do is just like I said, set the turbine spinning and it'll just spin there and that's the cooling. Like when it's too hot, it will spin itself and cool itself down. But when it's sitting here cold, it's been sitting all night. So what's interesting is that it sits around about 10,000 RPM just, you know, when it's sort of cooling itself or just, you know, the motor is, is spinning it. Yeah. I've got to feel the heat. I've got to feel the heat. Yeah. 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 This is the face of a happy person. Fully running now, which is awesome. Interestingly, very interesting, I assumed the motor would come on and just be like whining away, 
cooling it down until it was below uh, 100 degrees. It's got to be below 100 degrees centigrade. And then, you know, the motor shuts off because that's cool enough. But you know, when it shuts it off, it goes back on again. So the, the motor actually cycles, it clicks on and off, like off, off, until it's cool. It doesn't just blast it through. Unfortunately, I don't know if you noticed earlier, but the screen is starting to flicker again, which means the battery pack is low. I mean, those are brand new, pretty fancy pants Sony batteries. They weren't cheap. And, you know, but they're just double A, so I need to get a proper battery pack. But yeah, progress. A lot of progress. It's been a tough week or two on and off. You know, I've been coming down here and working with it when I've not been doing a video as well, so you haven't seen everything. But today is a good day. So I've used half the bottle of paraffin already. That's really only in two or three minutes of running. Seriously, like it goes through a liter every five minutes, something like that. I, I don't know what it is, but it, it, it rips through it. So, Gonna buy another bottle of paraffin. You can run it on diesel, by the way, but it's 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 you get more power from it. But diesels, there's gonna be more smoke and stuff, so you'll, we'll just keep it nice and clean and paraffiny just now. The other thing I'm gonna get is batteries, because like I mentioned, the display is starting to flicker. I think that that display it just zaps the batteries because um, it's like a cell phone display, and you know how hungry iPhones and things like that are on batteries. And the third thing is a bit of wire because. Someone in the comments, I believe it was Enrique, he suggested, he thought it was a wild idea, but I think it's a very clever idea. He suggested I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find this thing. Anyway, he suggested that I try anodizing titanium on the jet engine. I'm gonna do it. Something interesting for you. Bought these two batteries, a pack of four AA batteries and a square battery, P9 or whatever they call it. Combined, $18.98, $18.98. I was just paying for it and because I'm a regular there, I never actually asked for a discount. I arrogantly assumed I would get it. Anyway, put it through in the till, $18.98. I thought, wait a minute, I'm like the discount guy. So, asked for a discount. These two together, $8.91, $8.91. That's a 53% discount, just that I almost forgot to ask about. That's the kind of thing that makes my day. And jet engines, of course. So one of the other things I bought while I was out is this bit of wire here. I bought it from a place that sells like gardening stuff. I, I don't even know what it is, but it will do for what I need. This is one of my products here. This is called the hang key. It's a little pocket clip that goes in your pocket. A fairly bright finish on it. So the plan is to squeeze that together, put that in there, and we got that nice little way of holding it for anodizing it. Kind of lucky the way that worked out.
You probably can't tell, but it's a little bit smoky in here. The reason for that, I think, is we ran this machine for like a whole two or three minutes. Certainly compared to what we've run it before, it's a lot, but these things are designed to run. Like, the service time for these is 25 hours. So every 25 hours, you send it back to the manufacturer, they do what they need to do, which I think includes replace ceramic bearings, rebalance the spindle. I've seen that being done on video, and it's amazing how they do it. In terms of the anodizing, it kind of worked. You need to get good light. It's not silver anymore, it's a slightly, it's gold, but with a, a, hint, a hint of grey. I don't know how this will come out in the final video for you once I edit and do colour correction and things like that. Yeah, I actually colour correct my videos. But it definitely anodized, like, no doubt about it, that is an anodized bit of titanium done with a jet engine. I think I'll try it again, but not right now. I'll try, you know, like, I, I had it idling, it was only doing 43,000 RPM, and I just did it like that. I might in try increasing the power. Here's the thing, this thing does 143,000 RPM. If you take it up to half that, which is around 71,000 RPM, whatever it is, you only get a quarter of the power. The real power only comes, like, later on, like, higher higher up when it's really blasting. It's just, it's, it's, got, it's got an exponential power curve. That's the fancy tech word for today. So I think if I increase the revs, this is just going to go flying across the workshop and embed itself into the sink. Going to run it again just now but outside this time. Now this here is a big bucket of very heavy ceramic tumbling media. And we're putting this on here because if we don't, this bench is likely to go flying down the road. It's starting to rain. Right, you're probably wondering what I'm doing. I'm gonna tell you. Because the jet engine is now ready to go, the controller's working, it fires up, it's, it's, it's going. Like, I just need to put it on this skateboard to make the jet-powered skateboard. So what I'm doing now is testing the placement of my feet on the board. Not so much my front foot, but my back foot. Because I want to know, you know, how far forward I can put the jet engine. This is the front of the board here. So what I'm basically trying to find out is, you know, like, where, where does my back foot sit? How far back can I put my foot? And therefore, how far forward can I put the jet engine? Because worst case scenario is the jet engine has to sit not even above the skateboard, but way up at the back here. And that might be okay, you know, that might, that might give me more room, but I think it would be better if, you know, if I can have it a bit further forward, not so, you know, not hanging off the back. I just want to know where my foot needs to be, because I know if my foot's up here, my feet are gonna be together when I'm, you know, boarding along. I'm just not gonna have the control. I don't know that much about skateboards, but I do know that, like, 
you want to have a bit more of a, a stance, you might call it, I don't know. Once I know how far back this foot can go, I then know where I can put the turbine, basically. So that's what I'm trying to figure out just now. And yes, I am wearing my slippers. Actually, here's another funny thing. This skateboard here that I bought, I had no intention of using it when I first bought it for this project. I was going to make a completely custom board, like carbon fibre, titanium, that kind of thing. But the way it's working out, this isn't some like high speed land record thing I'm going for. I thought maybe I might do that initially, but I actually thought, no, I'm going to actually use this skateboard with the jet engine on it. Like, I want to go up and down the road with it. It's going to be loud, but it's going to be fun. You know, I have a, a very obsessive compulsive personality, very extremist, that kind of thing, and I usually buy something that's over the top, over engineered, over everything for like more than enough for my uses and I did that with a skateboard. This is like a $500 skateboard, like just ridiculous. I only really bought it just to sort of figure out what a skateboard was all about. And you know, I just bought like the top one they had in the shop, but luckily that extreme thing I did is now gonna pay off because I am putting my two and a half thousand dollar jet engine, which I don't want to damage or anything like that, on like a good board. If you've been following along in this jet-powered skateboard build, you know it's not going that fast. It's taken many, many weeks. But if there's one thing that I just can't do, you know, like I just refuse to do it, that is compromise on, you know, on quality and doing it right. And, you know, it, I'd rather just not do it at all. And, you know, sometimes it's frustrating. Things go slow. I can't do things that I'd like to do, especially in, you know, my business of making various titanium products. Now, I'm a big fan of Henry Ford. There are some amazing stories about him and about how he went about business and you can't imagine how many times and what he failed at before he started and became successful with the Ford Motor Company. You know, it's worth reading about him. And so today's quote is by Henry Ford. And he said, quality means doing it right when no one is looking. <laughs> <laughs>